Howdy folks, this is Big Sam. As y'all know, we do a lot of cool giveaways on the channel and today I'm super excited to announce we're doing another cool giveaway. That's right, this time what we've got on the block is an original World War I Mosin Nagant bayonet. Now this one is pretty interesting and we're gonna take a closer look at it to give you a better idea of what it is that you're in for here if you win this. But if you wanna get entered to win this cool bayonet, all you gotta do is post a comment below on this video and you'll automatically be entered to win this bayonet. And we're gonna be giving it away on the 6th of June, also known as D-Day of 2022. So make sure to add that comment so you guys don't miss out and of course make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell that way when we announce the winner you will know and you won't miss out because we give you three days to let us know or to contact me with your shipping info and address uh, otherwise we have to pick another one so don't miss out all right that rant aside Let's take a closer look at exactly what we have here, because this is a pretty interesting and unique piece, and I think y'all are going to love it. Man, this is a hefty piece of steel, folks. All right, so first of all, we know this is a World War I bayonet, and how do we know that? Well, this would have been used around that time because the big giveaway is this ring right here. Okay, now on the World War II style bayonets, which are going to be the, the common type of Mosin bayonet, they have a little plunger here and there's a button on the side. And that plunger allows you to then twist this on the rifle over the sight base and then release it. And then that button is then going to be pressing up against the sight base, holding it in place. These older ones work a little bit differently. All right, we have this ring here, and you'll notice there's a screw that goes through the ring. So you can obviously tighten and loosen this screw, and once it's loosened, you can actually move this. See that? So the way this works is you slide this over the muzzle of the gun, and this is, it would be the sight base going over here. So the sight base would go up to here, it would hit, and then you would twist it to there, and then you can see here it's sort of hollow in here in this ring, then it, the sight base could slide through, go forward onto the muzzle of the gun, and the sight base would finally hit right here. And then once that happens, you twist this ring and to lock it on, and then the sight base would be protruding out here. So when you're firing and moving around right, this is gonna be behind the sight base, so now it's gonna be locked and secured, and obviously you can tighten this with a screw if you want to make sure this doesn't move around on you. But that's how this works. Now, one caveat here is that this will not fit on a modern, let's say, 9130 rifle. And the main reason is going to be because of the front sight, right? If you have a 9130 with a uh, hooded front sight, like pretty much all of them are, the hood's obviously going to hit here, and it's not quite going to fit over it. Um, you would have to, like, figure out how to remove the ring, and you, know, you don't really want to do that. This is meant for... Rifles with just a simple little post front sight with not the big later hooded front sight we see on 9130 rifles. Obviously, this also won't fit on things like M44 carbines. Those already have bayonets on them, folding ones, in fact, or M38 carbines. This is meant for the older M91 style rifle or the older M91 Dragoon rifle. Uh, remember, the Cossack rifles weren't designed to have bayonets on them although you could put this on a cossack uh, you weren't really supposed to unless you were i guess you're doing some emergency bayonet charge or something this also won't fit over a 1907 carbine it's just not meant to so that whole spiel out of the way now we know what exactly it is we're dealing with here this is a world war one era bayonet for either an m91 or a dragoon rifle and remember the rifle, this would have been affixed almost all the time, except maybe while you were marching or the rifle was in storage. This rifle was, the rifle was sighted in with this bayonet affixed. So if you remove the bayonet and tried shooting, your point of impact would be a place you weren't expecting it to. Okay? 
So if you don't have, you know, an older style Mosin uh, 9130 that has the front sight post, the simple little little uh, post there, uh, some of those will, but generally you'll see those from like the Spanish Civil War where they didn't have the front sight hoods. Um, but again, this isn't going to fit on most of those types of 9130 rifles. This has to be probably an older variant to fit on with that shorter little front sight post that, that actually fit through this ring here, and then you can lock it on. The sight base is the same. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could even take off the front sight hood of a 9130 and replace it with an older style. So, and that's going down the rabbit hole, though. Let's take a look at some of the markings on this rifle, though, because this is where it gets weird. So first of all, who made this bayonet? Well, we don't necessarily see any markings here that tell us good info on that except maybe for this little marking right there i do see a c in a circle now not a hundred percent what this means but one potential is that that was uh that means that this was made by the chatel row factory in france uh, meaning this would be late 1894 early 1895 probably with that marking I don't know, though, if that marking 100% means that, but it is a possibility. So that's kind of interesting, I'll say. We have a number here. Now, this number would not be a correct font for the Chatel Row factory. This appears to be a later font. And it's really common to see that on these bayonets where they were reused by maybe a country other than Russia. And they were uh, remarked with a new serial number so this one looks like it's three nine oh that's an eight three eight two five four five okay we flip this guy around um i don't really see too many other markings that can tell us a lot we can see right here there's another c marking on the back here i don't know what that means your guess is as good as mine now, one other interesting thing about this bayonet, we can see here, it's got a, it's a four-sided bayonet, so you really wouldn't want to get stabbed by this. This one's actually been shortened, though, probably maybe a few inches, at least, which kind of makes this interesting. I'm not exactly sure why this was shortened. It's possible it, it broke off, but we can see here it's real, it's, if it did break off, someone nicely, um, uh, kind of refinish this whole thing and it this is a proper screwdriver tip here at the end so uh, it is tapered really nicely like it was meant to be this way although this is shorter than what we typically would see on a Mosin bayonet by maybe a few inches it seems like so really fascinating bayonet and you don't see these too often uh, you can find these but again these are going to be much more expensive and much less common than your standard like World War II era 9130 bayonet. And a lot of times when you find these bayonets, this ring can be missing. If this ring is missing, the bayonet's not worth all that much money because these rings are really like impossible to get just on their own. To buy a ring, you pretty much have to buy a bayonet that already has the ring on it. So the fact that this one has it is good. I don't really want to give away something that that's totally, you know, useless in that respect. So we do have the ring here with the screw. So uh, that's pretty nice. This one's also weird because you can see there's like particles falling out of it. It looks like there's ash in this one. Like somebody got cremated and their ashes were stored in the inside of this bayonet. That's kind of weird. I don't know why, but let's face it, folks. It's not a it's not a video a correct video on this channel if we're not looking at something that's at least a little bit on the weirder side of things. This definitely ticks that box. And if you do win this, I'd be happy to clean this for you ahead of time. Just let me know if you want that done on the inside there. Uh, but other than that, I think that kind of covers most of the markings and the history of this one. Again, this could be a French, original French contract bayonet produced in the 1890s. We don't know 100%, but that's really our only get best guess as to what this is based off of that one marking that we do see. 
Sometimes we have to work with what we have and a lot of times you won't even find really any sort of markings on these. These guys were so old and they're worn and they get reused over and over over the last hundred plus years that uh, any marking still left on them is a big plus. So that's really cool. And we can see here, um, this guy kind of stops here, I think, because the screw needs to be loosened a little bit more. But you'll see here, there's this built-in stop into the body of the bayonet. And that's meant to basically hit here on this notch cutout to prevent over-travel. So another nice feature of these. All right, well, I hope you guys are now sort of excited about this. I like giving away bayonets because, let's face it, who doesn't like bayonets? And they're cool because generally we can ship them to all sorts of different countries, as far as I know. And we've got a lot of international viewers here that don't live in the United States. So I like to give them a chance as well to win something cool. And I, th I think hopefully at least this ticks that box. And maybe this will end up in the country originally it came from at one time or another. Who knows? That would be fascinating. So I hope you guys are excited about this new giveaway. If you like more Mose and Nagant content like this and you want to be alerted for future giveaways, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Let me know if y'all got any prayer requests. And we'll see you next time.